Hey, welcome to Electron Online. Now here we're going to show again how to use the simplex method for maximization problems. And again, this is just a basic introduction, assuming we don't have to set up the equations and inequalities and all that. They're kind of given to us, uh, but we still want to go to the various steps on how to go about solving one of those problems. It's kind of a complicated uh, methodology, but if you get the steps right in the same order every time, it, it becomes a lot easier. So let's say here again, the first thing you want to do is you want to define your variables and you have maybe two, three, four, five variables. So define them, let X equal, let's Y equal. So maybe the quantity produced or the quantity sold or something like that. Then you need to determine what's being maximized. So let's say here we're trying to maximize the profit. The third thing you do is determine the objective function. In this case, the objective function is given to us. We don't have to figure it out. So the profit will be one of X and three of Y. And of course, we need to value, find the values for y to see what that profit will be. And again, we want to find the maximum profit here. There usually are some constraints. And notice that for maximization problem, they, they should always say less than or equal to some number. So here we have x plus y is less than or equal to 6. And 2x plus y is less than or equal to 8. If it says greater than, then you're dealing with a minimization problem. So that's usually how you can tell the difference. Sometimes they're mixed. That's kind of a non-standard problem, and we'll show you later how to deal with that. But here, this is standard. We have inequalities with less than or equal to in both cases. And then finally, we want to then turn these inequalities into equations by adding slag variables. Well, if x plus y is less than 6, well, what do you need to add to it to make it equal to 6? Well, let's add some slag variable to it, which means we can then say that x plus y plus an unknown slag variable will then make this equal to 6. For example, if x and y are 0, then the slag variable is equal to 6. If x and y are both equal to 1, then the slag variable will be equal to 4. It'll just make, take up the slag of what x and y cannot give you to make it equal to 6. Here again, we'll add a slag variable, so 2x plus y plus some other slag variable will be equal to 8. Again, if x and y are 0, then the slag variable is 8. If x is 1 and y is 2, then 2 plus 2 is 4, then the slag variable will have to be 4 to make it equal to 8. So the slag variable simply takes up the slag so you can turn an inequality into an equation because you can't turn, you can't take inequalities and put them in a, in a simplex tableau. You have to actually use equations. The next thing we want to do is take the objective function and rewrite it so that everything is on one side and set equal to 0 on the other side. So this becomes minus x minus 3y plus p is equal to 0. So we take this equation, move this to the left side, and now we'll look like that. So once you have those two equations and this objective function rewritten, we can now put that into what we call an augmented matrix, also known as a simplex tableau. When we do that, it will look like this. So we have a first equation, you put the coefficients of x, y, the slack variable, so you go x, y, slack variable 1, slack variable 2, profit, and then you delineate it because on the right side of that you're going to put the constants that are on the right side of the equal signs. So we're going to have two equations plus we're going to have the objective function rewritten. So the coefficients of the first equation is 1 for x, 1 for y, 1 for the slack variable 1, there's no slack variable 2, there's no profit, and the constant is 6. The second equation, 2, 1, 0, there's a slack variable 2, there's no profit variable, and 8. And then for this equation right here, we have a minus 1, a minus 3, a 0, a 0, a 1, and a 0. So what that means is that your basic solution so far is, remember that whenever you have a column that does not have a 1 and zeros like this, like Z2 columns, those variables are then set equal to 0. So since these columns don't look something like this, then we know x and y must be equal to 0. So x equals 0 and y equals 0. Now, slack variable 1 is equal to 6. Slack variable 2 is equal to 8. And the profit at this point is equal to 0 because this number right here represents the profit. Notice, profit has a 1 and zeros, so profit equals 0 at this point. That's your basic solution. That's, of course, a non-solution. You don't want to end up with the basic solution, of course. So now the next thing we want to do is we want to determine where we want to pivot. So we look for these numbers right here, and we find the smallest, or I should say the largest negative number, which is the minus 3. So that's the largest negative number. So somewhere in here we're going to pivot either one of these two numbers. Now which one of those two will be determined by what we call the ratio? 
the ratio of the constant divided by the number in the column you're trying to pivot. So here we get 6 divided by 1, which is 6, and here we have 8 divided by 1, which is 8. So 6 divided by 1 is 6, and 8 divided by 1 is 8. And you take the, the row with the smallest number, which means you're going to pivot about this column and this row, which means you're going to pivot around that number. Now, if that number is not a 1, then you want to turn into a 1 by dividing the entire row by this number to turn into a 1. Since it's already 1, we don't need to do that. And so next we're going to get rid of this number and we're going to get rid of this number. So when we have a 1, a 0, and a 0, we then will have an identified value for y equal to whatever that number is over there. Because notice, this will remain a 1, and whatever that number is after we're done, then y will be equal to that value. So let's go ahead and eliminate these other two. We do that by taking the second row, row 2, and replacing it by the negative of this number, negative 1, times the row with the pivot, r1, and adding it to r2. We do the same with r3. We take the negative of this number, which is a positive 3, multiply it times the row with the pivot number, which is r1, and add it to r3. That will cause these two numbers to go to 0. That's the objective. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. And then we end up with the following adjusted matrix. So the first row does not change. So it's 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, and 6. Notice that this is x, y, s1, s2, p. OK, the second row, notice I multiply this by negative 1 and add it to this. This goes to 0. But we have to do the same to all the other numbers right here. So negative 1 times r1, so negative 1 times this, times this gives me 1. So negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Negative 1 plus 0 is negative 1. Negative 1, well, negative 1 times 0 is 0. Add it to 1, I get 1. This will stay at 0. And then negative 1 times 6 is negative 6. Add it to 8 gives me a 2. I still have to take care of the third row. So 3 times this added to that gives me 0. 3 times this added to that gives me a 2. 3 times this added to that gives me a 3. 3 times 0, that stays at 0. 3 times 0, that stays at 1. And 3 times 6, that's 18, added to 0 gives me 18. So this is an intermediate result. Notice now that x is still 0, but y is no longer 0. And slack variable 1 is no longer a number, but slack variable 2 still has a value for 2. So the intermediate result tells me that x is equal to 0 because I don't have a 1 and all zeros in this column. y will be equal to 1 times 6, so that's 6. s1, that is now 0. s2 is not 0 yet. s2 is equal to 2. And the profit is now equal to 18. Now notice we're going to continue until all these numbers are either 0 or greater than 0, but it's already greater than 0. So we're basically done at this point. We found the maximum profit. The maximum profit is 18, and the maximum profit is when x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 6. So let's plug that in here. So let's check that out. So the profit is equal to when x is equal to 0, plus 3 times when y is equal to 6, and that of course is indeed 18, which is what we have over there. Now, what would happen if we continue the problem? Say, OK, I would like to have a value for x. I want to manufacture not just y products, but also a certain number of x problems. Will that cause my profit to go up? Will it stay the same? Will it go down? Let's find out. So now we're going to pivot about this column right here. And notice, if I take the ratio, and I have 6 divided by the number in that column that's equal to 6, and I have 2 divided by the number of that column, which is equal to 2. So that's the smallest ratio. But in other words, I should pivot about this column and this row. So I should pivot about that number. Notice that's a different row than I pivot here, which is good news. You don't want to pivot twice on the same row because that causes problems. OK, that means we want to go ahead and turn these two into zeros. In order to do that, we need R1 to be replaced by the negative of that number, which is negative 1, times the row with the pivot in it, added to the row. So negative 1 times r2 times r1 will make that into a 0. And for row 3, if I want to make that go to 0, 
that would then be equal to or replaced by, actually we, we like to use the arrow because what we're doing is we're replacing it. So row three is going to be replaced by the negative of this number. So negative two times the row with the pivot, which is R2, R2, and add it to R3. Let's see if you can see that on the camera there. So notice I'm going to change row one and row three to turn this and this into zero, so then have a value for X. So let's put that into our next matrix. So our matrix is right here. Notice we still have X, Y, slack variable one, slack variable two, profit, and then of course we have the constant over here. Which row does not change? The one with the pivot. So the middle row here does not change. So we have a one, a zero, a negative one, a one, a zero, and a two. So that stays the same. What about the first row? Well, I take negative one times R2, that's a negative one, added to this, that becomes zero. Notice since this is a zero, the one doesn't change. Negative one times a negative one is a positive one. Added to one, I get a two. Negative one times one, that's negative one, added to zero is negative one. This is zero, so nothing changes here. And negative one times two is negative two, added to six, that becomes a four. Okay, so that's taken care of. Now my bottom row. R3 is going to be replaced by negative two times the row with the pivot. And so negative two times one, added to two, that goes to zero. Negative two times zero, nothing changes. Negative two times a negative one is a positive two, added to three, gives me a five. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 added to 0 is negative 2. Negative 2 times 0, nothing changes. And negative 2 times 2 is negative 4 added to 18 gives me 14. Notice what happened now. This is my profit number. My profit number went from 18 to 14. That's less profit, but I do have a value for x and I have a value for y. Notice, x now is going to be equal to 2 y is equal to 4. s1, the slack variable, is equal to 0. And the second slack variable, s2, is equal to 0 as well. So there's no slack. A full production in x and y. And the profit is now equal to 14, which is not my maximum profit. Okay? So let's compare that. When we plug that into our objective function, let's see what happens. So the profit, and so that's going to be for this number right here, is going to be equal to x, and we said that x was equal to 2, plus 3 times y, we said y is equal to 4, and notice 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2 is indeed 14, just like what we have over there, which means that, yes, I did find a value for x, I did find a value for y, but by doing that, I'm now operating at a lower profit margin, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to produce, um, let's say, 2 of x and 4 of y because it gives me lower profit, what I want to do instead is I want to produce 6 of y and 0 of x, and I'll get a bigger profit, and that's what I want to do. I don't want to produce any x. I want to produce nothing but y. I want to produce 6 of y and 0 of x. That gives me the maximum profit. Notice the beauty of this, uh, this methodology. You can go ahead and continue on and then see, oh, my profit goes up, my profit goes down, when I get different values of production for x and y. So that's why we use this, the simplex method. It uses this very clever te technique. This is known as the simplex tableau that we started out with. And then we use the simplex method of, of uh, optimization by using what we call this technique to solve standard maximization problems. Now we've done just an example with just two variables. Later on, we'll show some examples that are a little bit more complicated, maybe three or four uh, variables. But again, the technique is really good. And I'll show you some more examples to see how nice it really works on all kinds of different problems. And that's how we do that.